It's girl talk. Why do you have to lie about that? Is this true? With I- you and my sister, none other than T.T. Torres, right here. I Power 92 Watch the Launch. Well, I've been telling you guys about this interview for quite some time now. He is on the phone lines. His name is Tony Newman. Actually, he's a he, she, a transgender, born a male, but now has transformed his outer appearance into a female. He's the author of Tony Newman. Um, His book is called I Rise, The Transformation of Tony Newman, which is available on Amazon. Let's bring him up. Hello. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. Okay. So, everybody, it's Tony Newman, I Rise, the book. It's in stores right now, correct? It's in uh, stores, I think, June the 1st, but on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, ebook, Kindle, your iPad. You can download it on, as an ebook for like nine bucks. It's out now all over the internet, and it will hit stores, I believe, June the 1st. Okay, and the book is about a true tale of rags to riches of an African-American transgender. Yes, that is the true nature of the book. 25 years of my journey, going from a southern boy to a full-fledged transgender in 2011. It took me 25 years to transform myself from male to female. Okay, so before we go deep into what everybody has been tweeting and asking about, I kind of want to talk to you about your background. Um, You're from the South. Jacksonville, North Carolina, born and raised for 18 years before I left to go to college. But growing up in the South, when did you realize, okay, I wanted to be a female? At the age of eight, I was called a sissy boy by uncles and cousins, so effeminate, spoke, the the list, you know, the hands, I explained myself. Uh, I talked almost as I talk now, soft voice, and most of the people in my family called me a sissy boy. When did you have your first sexual experience? I was in high school uh, uh, when I had my first experience. You know, he was all, he was a very good looking guy. People always thought he was good looking. He was athletic. I was soft and very feminine, 55, and I had my first encounter at that time. Did you come out immediately and say, okay, no, I'm gay? No, 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 no. I was in a Christian Holy Ghost field family. Yeah. Mom and daddy, great people. Go to church, Sunday school, Bible study. No, honey, I was all the way in college, away, 500 miles away. Yeah. So I started coming out, going to drag clubs, none of that while I was up to 18. Yeah. I knew it. I yeah. felt it. But in a small town like that, I knew if I made a step, everybody would know. I was told that's not God. That's not holy. So, so you so you pretty much had to live a down low lifestyle. Down low, down low, down low. Gay, but really womanly, but a drag queen. In college, I'm, I'm the boy in class. Then I sneak out for my sweet mates, put my wig on, then I'm floating around the drag club from 12 to 4. 6 o'clock, I'm back in math class. Good morning. Okay, let's get to it. Ew, I feel you. All right, so Tony, let's talk about um, some of your successes in life. Now, you were an ex-Playgirl magazine model. During that period in my life, I was hanging out with a young man who was uh, gay and very well built. I was in between. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. You know, I felt feminine. I was a very feminine guy, but I thought maybe if I build my body up and go a different route, I really won't have to go and be a transgender. I had done research and most of them are on the street. They're prostituting. I don't see them with any jobs back when I was coming up. And I was like, I can't do this to myself. Where would I go if I started making a change? I'm going to lose my family. I'm going to lose everything I got. So I said, I'm going to build my body. So I built my body and did fitness magazines. Playgirl was in calendars. And I just kept going with that, thinking, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not. But at this point, you were still a man. Still a man. And still, from time to time, late at night, putting a wig on. Going out as a drag queen. Right. So I was still dragging. Yeah. Even though I was not supposed to be doing it no more. And my body looked like... A man. You know, huge. Yeah. I mean, it was more huge than huge now. All right. So when did you begin to start the process of transforming your look into a woman? And how did you start that process? Well, I, after I got out of Wake Forest in 1985 with my bachelor's, I worked at Fortune 500 companies. Seven years after graduation, I became a full-fledged drag queen, meaning seven nights out of the week I was going out. I drag queen for four years to about 96. After the Playgirl thing, 
uh, 97, 98, I started secretly taking female hormones and mm-hmm. other hormonal shots, getting silicones, which at that time and now is not good for you, in my chest, in my face, in my buttocks. So I was taking estrogen and getting pumped, as we call it in my community. I went full-fledged transgender, meaning I went out in the day. I've been taking hormones under my clothes. Out in the day, at about 1999, 2000, I started wearing the wig and going out in the day and says, here I am, I'm hormoning, I'm trying to be a woman, and that was been the last 11 years. Right, and so now, um, at this point, you fully look like a female. Can you tell the difference? I, re- I say, I say, I resemble a female. All right. I was born a man, and I cannot not ever deny that. Uh, I have a chest, a womanly figure. I've been lasered. My face is completely smooth by laser and silicone shots. So I say uh, I resemble a woman because it's been controversial to say you are not ever going to be a woman. You were born a man. That's true. So I say that I resemble and that of a female. I okay. look that of a female. Okay. So. Now, have you had the procedure done to have your penis removed? I am still preoperative, and at this point, so I don't. I haven't done that, and at this point, I don't plan to. All right, Tony. I, I hate to stop you right here, but I got to take a quick break. Everybody, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Tony Newman. This interview is about to heat up. Of course, um, Tony Newman is a transgender who has the book out, I Rise. Keep your radio dial locked in. It's Apple 921. It's Girl Talk with T.T. Torres. We'll be back. It's Girl Talk. Why do you have to lie about that? Is this true? With uh, you and my sister, none other than T.T. Torres, right here. I Power 92. Watch the lot. Yep, it's Girl Talk with me, T.T. Torres. And if you're just tuning in, I'm talking to the transvestite, uh, Tony Newman. He slash she has a book out. It's called I Rise. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with a female? I have tried on one encounter back in my fitness days, a young black girl who I thought was just gorgeous. We've been drinking. She said, you should try it. You got all that body and you're giving it to the boys. We got naked, I was intoxicated, and it never moved. Wow. It never got up. I've never, that was what, 17 years ago? I've never even tried, had no interest, love them, feel a part of them, have an inside that feels like a woman, but as far as sexual, no go for me. Okay, so let's talk about your fall from grace. Um, you worked at a Fortune 500 company. You have a degree, you know, to the outside looking in. This seems like a, a lady. Excuse me, would you rather me call you a lady or a guy? You can call I am transgender. Okay. So from the outside looking in, it appears that you have it going on. Then you fall uh, from grace. Appear, I was hanging out with a white young man, and he had a great body. He said, do you want to make a little extra money on the side while we work our main job? He was at the bank. I was somewhere else. People were paying great money just to see our beautiful bodies. They're seeing me in Playgirl. I got over 500 letters a month. You know, if you ever want to talk to me, I'm a, I'll pay you 500, 400. So I did accept, as a male bodybuilder, money for appreciation for my body. And that began to lead into something a little bit more as time went on. I fell into that more and more as the money kept coming because my body was so well built and people would see it in the magazines and would start a fantasizing. And they wanted it. And would make great offers. So I did do that. Yes, that is true. From escorting, you fell into prostitution. Servicing people for 40 bucks just to survive. That was your job. You don't do that, nobody's going to give you a job. When you put a wig on, people think you look crazy. They don't want to hire you. They're not going to put you behind their counter in their restaurant, in their bank. So most of the girls who are black and Latina were out there. So these guys would come out for an hour, give you the money, make you feel good, and then bounce. And don't, don't know you in the daytime. That was just the life we led from 11 p.m. to 6 in the morning. That is correct. Everybody, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Tony Newman, the author of I Rise. All right, so in your book, you don't name names, but uh, you did take a lie detector test with the National Enquirer. I see the contract, and um, you spoke about an incident with LL Cool J, correct? That is correct. Now, how that happened was I did the lie detector test, got a contract, was told my story was coming out. They asked for pictures of me as a guy to a female. What kind of hormones did I take? We were waiting. I think it was on February the 25th or 26th. It was supposed to come out. My publisher gets a call. We're in talks with LL. We'll be in touch. It still may run. You're still on an exclusive three-week contract. I had a contract with them. 
You can't speak of this nowhere else. We never did. A week later, uh, we, we, we're not going to run it. Uh, we, we, we worked something out, and uh, we're sorry. I go back that Monday, pick up my transcript. I was released from the National Enquirer contract. They paid me to polygraph. After that, I sent them on the information. Up until the very day it was supposed to run, I was expecting to see it in the National Enquirer paper. We were told they worked something out. I don't know what that means. Yeah. But I've been polygraphed on certain questions in relation to LL Cool J in my days as a tranny street prostitute. And so That's let's... All I'm going to get to. Okay, so I let's get... I have a get... contract stating... His name is on the contract, which I sent you. Yeah, I got it. it I has, looked it. It has the word prostitute on it. Cool J. So I sent that to people now, letting them know it's not something I made up. I went to the, the cloud called. I went to their offices. I met their polygrapher. Um, Jackie Jasper has his name. He's contacted the polygrapher. I sent that time have taken the same polygraph with the same nine questions that was given to me by the inquirer. Something separate for another magazine. Now someone else is asking me to do the same nine questions next week uh, again for their magazine. So I've done it twice. Right. And so the answer to the question, and everybody wants to know, did you have sex with LL Cool J? Yes, I have polygraphed that I had sex with LL Cool J as a street prostitute one time. Ooh, how was the sex? I, I, I'm, you know what? I, I've been saying it was an encounter. He was one of hundreds. During that time that came out. Oh. Hundreds. There are so many other names, but as you read my book, my book says rappers, thugs, such and such. I don't name a soul. In my book, I haven't outed anybody. I was polygraphed on one encounter with one man at one time. It didn't get into the you know the specifics of the sex. It said had sex as a street prostitute. Had sex one time as a street, street prostitute with LL Cool J. I answered yes and yes. And passed. Okay. So I would say I've had sex one time and passed on that note. One lie detector test. I've got a second one here that was given by another magazine and taking another one next week, supposedly, to answer the same nine questions again. I could have said a whole bunch of stuff. Well, yeah. He called me the next day. I snuck in the hotel. I did this. We went over here. I haven't said nothing negative about this man. I said one time for less than... A, a, a couple of hours. That's what I was polygraphed on. That's what I said. And so, I'm not slandering anybody or defaming anybody. I'm talking about my one time, one experience. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say we were lovers. I then said I have not spoke to him in over 13 years. We've never spoke on the phone. We're not friends. We're not acquaintances. Mm -hmm. It was a one time encounter. And I don't know why the American people would put these people on such a level that they can't believe a lot of their well known black, white actors, rappers, musicians, politicians are bisexual. And who live this download lifestyle. After they leave the church and they put their children to bed, and I've got to go to the store, I'm going to go hang out with my friends. They don't even, they're not even aware of who they're married to. And that to me is very sad. Not just sad, but also very dangerous because you're playing with people's lives. Um, Tony Nguyen, we have to go into a quick break. All right, put him on hold. Wow, oh wow. Everybody, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Tony Newman, a, a transgender female um of course he was born a man but now has transgendered into a female and he has the book out i rise and we'll be back with more of tony newman type power 921 interactive hip-hop and rb wow it, it is girl talk i am tt torres and if you're just tuning in we're talking to tony newman a transvestite author of i rise now during your prostitution days tony you have seen many people through all walks of life including many celebrities there's been two other names that i have been asked right mr c they asked about eddie murphy they say eddie murphy well eddie murphy's already been caught with a transgender prostitute. He was caught by a police officer with a transgender prostitute. This is common known fact. I have said I never had sex with Eddie Murphy. I've never been in his car, his room, been with him intimately. But I know at least five to ten transgenders during my street prostitutes, those who know and have been with him some more than once. And you have been asked a question about Mr. C of Hot 97 who recently got arrested with a transgender in his car. From my research, 
twice before that, exactly. it was never publicized. This is his third arrest for picking up a transvestite and transgender prostitute with the New York Police Department. That was said by the New York Police Department public relations officers. So don't take my word. Call them and get the report. This is the, the most recent one is the third time he was caught getting a blowjob in his car from a trans best title transgender prostitute now have you ever given mr c a professional i have given him shit on more than 10 occasions okay i would say 10 i used to see mr c all the time the girls loved him there's no sex involved with mr c he didn't want to do nothing to you there was nothing else done he enjoyed receiving thorough good head. he's verbal about it and he will treat you well financially with an extra 20, 40 if he is satisfied with your performance. And do I'm not here to out people. The list is growing. There's a couple of reporters now who put together a list. They've got pictures of people now. They've got inside information from some of their assistants. I'm not a part of that. But can you confirm that you have slept with rappers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because oh, yes. <laughs> anybody can say anything. Right. I've heard people tell on the internet, so I've heard stuff about myself since the last nine days that's just absolutely false. So I've heard talkings and rumblings, but anybody can talk. Where's the proof? Let's take a test. Let's get some evidence. Then it'll be more believable, in my opinion. If you're going to do this, have something to back it up or be willing to, to do something to stand up and say, I will take a polygraph test and a test of these things. Why haven't you came out and actually told people the names of, of the rappers and politicians that you've slept Well, because I started out with names, and then I realized I was up to 38 people. Wow. Of people who would know people. Had evidence that my good girlfriend, who I lived with for years, she dated one. Had pictures of him in our house. He is now a big rapper. Big rapper. She couldn't call him and ask him, can you buy me a cup of coffee? He wouldn't take her call. He would pass on the street as if he didn't know her. And then my editor said, listen. If you do this, you're going to open yourself up to a lot of trouble. I then put all the names out and said politicians, rappers. I didn't out one person. I haven't named a show. And there you have the book, and you've seen it for yourself. Here's what disturbs me, Tony, is the fact that these men go home to wives. They go home to girlfriends. They go home to the mothers of their kids. 99% of these men, if asked straight out, are you gay? They would say no. I call it more bisexual since they're dealing with uh, something with a penis and a full-fledged female. Is it bisexual? They would say no. I was with a woman, or it looked like a woman. They won't even admit to having affairs, and they definitely won't admit to cheating with the transgender. I'm just trying to let you know most of the million transgenders is estimated in America that are black and Latin. They don't have jobs. How are these people surviving if someone isn't supporting them? Who is supporting these transgender, they call them he, she's, in America? You don't see them in your Starbucks, in your Chase, in Bank of America. You don't run into them every day in regular business uh, situations. Most of the people I talk to have never met a transgender in a professional setting. Some of these people's husbands are. Some of these people are not famous, but some of them are famous. Mm-hmm. Wow. And some of them are not so famous and still living that down low lifestyle. All right. Look, um, let's go into another break. When we come back, um, everybody, we're going to have one more break with Tony Newman, the author of I Rise. It's at Pop One Interactive Hip Hop and R&B. We'll be back. It's girl talk. Why do you have to lie about that? Is this true? With you and my sister, none other than T.T. Torres right here. I Power 92. the launch. Girl Talk on iPod 1 Interactive Hip Hop and r and I am Titi Torres. And if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Tony Newman, the author of I Rise. When the transgender community come into someone who's living that down low lifestyle, bisexual, what have you, do they protect themselves as condoms? I always use condoms. A lot of them want it raw and bare. Wow. And we'll pay that extra hundred, which is the tranny life. And she need money, so she'll take it. And most of the trannies would say, hey, you got money, you pay me, you can get what you want. They do their little thingy thingy. And some of these guys would say, listen, I want such and such. I want it bad. I want it raw. And they'll get down. And then they'll go back into the straight community and get with their female, whether it be their girlfriend's wife or whatever, mm. taking all that stuff from one community to another. And it's happening. Wow. 
So I ask people, is it your boyfriend or husband? Have you went home and asked? Okay, you're not gay. Are you bisexual? Have you been with a transgender? Because most people, when they ask if they're gay, they think, oh, it was a man, so I can say no because it didn't look like a man that had pity. But Tony, you and I know that they're not going to confess to this lifestyle. So as a straight female, how do I know? What can I look for? You can tell the essence of a man if you have instinct. If you ask him, have you had bisexual encounters and he's a little hostile, what the fuck are you saying that to me for? I'm not no homo. There are signs that will give it away. I find that a guy who doesn't have much to hide, there's no animosity, there's no anger. You, you can tell. I find the guys who give you the most beef about it. What are you trying to say? You're trying to say I go that way? I find that sometimes a sign of there's something there. And see, a lot of people are so mesmerized, especially these ladies who are so naive, get with these people of uh, a certain status. You know, whether they're a, a high-powered politician or CEO of a corporate company, and they become blindsided about the facts and the well, reality. This is so high that you can't believe this man is a cocaine addict at night performing oral sex on a transgender uh, person. From 12 to 2, this person of high moral fiber is doing things that most people would say, Lord, have mercy. Right. It's happening. It's going to come out now. There's over 100 transgender who call magazines. I got a proof of this rapper. I hear it coming out more and more. There's an expose coming out in two weeks. I'm just going to sit back. I'm not into exposing. But if it's, if it's happening and these ladies have got proof, why should they stay on, in the down low on the streets as a prostitute when they're not prostituting by themselves? These guys are helping them. But I'm trying to open it up. Have you been bisexual with anything with the same genitalia as you? That is bisexual. Because both of you have the same tool. Yeah. Woman to woman, man to man, it is bisexual. That yeah. is not heterosexual sex as defined by Webster Dictionary. Yeah. And all the men, just to be clear, Tony, all the men that you've slept with, including LL Cool J, knew you were born a man. When I had a wig on, when I am naked, I have a male genitalia between my legs. Whether I tell them or not, when we're both naked, it is a little hard to hide a male genitalia between your legs. Okay. Everybody, it's Tony Newman. The book, I Rise, is um, available online, Amazon.com. You guys can purchase it. It will be available in bookstores in June. Tony, I want to say thank you so much for um, coming and speaking. You've been a real Tony. interview. At least you've been open enough to know, but you've talked to others beside me mm. for years to know, Lord, this ain't nothing but the truth. The last radio girl I talked to, oh, my boy, my boy, oh, he'd never do nothing like that. I said, Miss Thing, never say never. I've learned never can be possible. And I hope people can realize it for the truth. If you speak to other transgenders, if they're going to be honest, they will tell you they've got their own names that would probably blow your mind. Ooh, girl, who you telling? If we would put the whole list together, we'd probably sit here and say, oh, my God. Mm, I want to um, chit chat with you behind the scenes because I already know what it is. You ain't, you ain't got to tell me. Not all black rappers now. Let's get it straight. There are some straight black rappers and record execs and politicians, but I'm saying a lot are sneaking out bisexually with transgender sisters. All right, Tony, I wish you much success on your book. Um, if you're ever in the area, please come by the show. I would love to have you in person. I want to tell you on behalf of the black transgender community, thank you. Thank you. I say keep an open mind and never say never. Okay. You will be surprised. And we have this saying on the show where we embrace all communities and all walks of life by saying two snaps in the shake. Ew. <laughs> As we pour today, two snaps, Tony. And the thank book, you. I Rise. God bless you and your readers. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Woo! Wow! Look, man, I got to go and make room for King Tut. But all I have to say is, wow, oh, wow. Trust and believe that interview will be posted on our website for those of you who are just tuning in or for those of you who weren't able to check out the full interview. It's going to be on iPowerRichmond.com. I got to go. Have a fabulous weekend. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Find out where I will be in the city. <laughs> How I go from that to that? <laughs> all right. Thank you for listening, texting, tweeting, and all of the above. You guys know I love you for that. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye. PT complete. Download complete.